Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to have you all join us today for our third and final webinar in our Sustainability for Design series. Today, we are going to approach efficiency from two different perspectives. Efficiency is a broad topic, and we're going to first focus on design practices that can result in lower end use environment impact, thermal and fluid analysis to optimize designs. Then we'll talk a little bit about operational efficiency, getting the most operational efficiency OEE and monitoring manufacturing efficiency metrics using tools like ThinkWorks. My name is Sophie and I'm on the marketing team here at EAC Product Development Solutions. And today we're gonna to talk more about our sustainability regarding energy efficiency um, presented by one of our application engineers, Stephen Prawley. So a little housekeeping, housekeeping before we begin. If you have any questions during the presentation, please do not hesitate to type them into the chat and we will make sure they get answered. And we'll also have time at the end for questions. We'll also be recording this session today. So pending any technical difficulties, we will be sending out a replay of the webinar following the session today. And I'm gonna start off by giving a short introduction of EAC and then I will hand things over to Steven. At EAC Product Development Solutions, our mission is to help companies design, manufacture, and connect to their products. Our products, solutions, and services span the complete product development lifecycle, including computer-aided design, simulation, additive manufacturing, product service and application lifecycle management, technical publications, IoT, and augmented reality. We are the leading premier PTC partner offering the whole PTC portfolio, as well as leading global solution provider for over 20 years. We also partner with Formlabs and Intamsys to offer 3D printing lines to address your additive manufacturing needs. We offer multiple service offerings to help manufacturers achieve their business goals with a focus on process optimization and the digital thread. So this includes business assessments, training, migrations, extensive technical support, engineering and design services, and much, much more. We are headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota, with employees spread all across the US. So we are within reach and ready to help no matter where your business is located. So that's just a little bit about EAC. Now I'll hand things over to Steven to talk more about how our solutions can impact sustainability initiatives through design. All right, thank you, Sophie. <clears throat> and thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. Um, like Sophie said, my name is Steven and I'm an applications engineer for EAC. So today we'll be talking about uh, sustainability. Again, this is the third part of our webinar series today. And I'll start by giving a short overview of sustainability. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the focus of the presentation today in energy efficiency some of the PTC tools that help with energy efficiency, and we'll have a couple uh, pocket demonstrations that will go through back and forth in between the, the presentation slides. And like Sophie said, we will have time at the end for any questions and answers, so feel free to put those in the chat as we go along. As we know, uh, discrete manufacturing must change if we want to serve our needs without sacrificing the needs of future generations. And because of this, industry today is pushing for more sustainable processes for companies all around the world. At first glance, improving product sustainability appears costly, it appears risky. But the truth is that this is a huge opportunity for us. We've learned from our customers and our own science-based programs that sustainability has far more upside than downside in our companies. In our world today, there is a certain problem in the way that manufacturing companies are handling materials, in the way that they are consuming energy, and in the way that they are recycling their waste. Our demand for material is exceeding the Earth's capacity. More than half of the global energy consumption comes from manufacturing and production sectors. And right now, only a very small percentage of waste and scrap is actually recycled. However, these are all problems that are certainly worth solving. The majority of companies today are getting on board with more sustainable purchases. Employees are looking for jobs that have, have strong environmental goals. And companies with environmental programs in place are seeing an increase in shareholder value, as well as proven revenue increases year over year. So in today's webinar, 
uh, like, like Sophie said, we will be focusing on energy efficiency. And we all know that um, energy efficiency is a very broad topic. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to approach this in sort of two different perspectives. So we will first focus on design practices that can help result in a lower end use environmental impact for our products. So practices such as optimization, simulation, rapid design iterations, virtual prototyping, uh, that's what we'll be covering in the first uh, portion of this energy efficiency webinar. We will then be talking about operational efficiency. So things like digital monitoring of assets, preventative maintenance and service efficiency, all things that sort of affect our power to product ratio. So for the rest of the webinar, we will be focusing on PTC tools that help with sustainability, specifically with energy efficiency. So today I'll be walking through some of the benefits and capabilities of Creo Simulation Live, Creo ANSYS Simulation. We'll talk a little bit about others, some of the other PTC simulation tools that are available for Creo. And then we're gonna be talking about ThingWorks. So ThingWorks, the IoT platform that can help with the operational efficiency. And we'll start off with Creo Simulation Live. So Creo Simulation Live is a great tool for enhancing energy efficiency, not only for the product use itself and end use environmental impact, but also the process of creating our products. In terms of the product itself and its end use, uh, Creo Simulation Live can help us to achieve things like material optimization, leading to less energy consumption during manufacturing, during transportation. Um, it can also lead to lighter, more effective designs that will help with energy savings um, during the product's operational life. Quickly being able to reduce stress concentrations will help us to build more durable products, products that will require fewer replacements, reducing the overall energy footprint associated with production, shipping, and disposal. In terms of the product development process, the speed and the interactivity of CSL will help users to create rapid iterations, rapid optimizations without needing actual physical prototypes, overall reducing the time and resources needed to arrive at an energy efficient design. So today we're gonna to be showing Creo Simulation Live. I have a short demonstration for us going over a structural analysis. And a lot of you might be thinking, Structural analysis, how does that really help with energy efficiency? In terms of energy efficiency, uh, in industries such as aerospace, automotive, really the, the, light, the lighter we can create our products, the more energy efficient uh, they will be um, while they're being used. So that's what we'll be going over today. And you can see here I have Creo open. I'm in the live simulation tab indicating that I have CSL open for us. And over on the left here, you can see that we have the ability to create um, different simulation studies. So if I wanted to add a simulation study to this, I could from right here, and I could do structural, thermal, modal, or fluid um, simulation studies in here. Now under our structure study, you can see that we have a list of constraints um, placed on our uh, motorcycle swing arm that we're using today. We also have a couple loads that are placed on here as well. So once we have our loads and constraints, our study set up, we can go ahead and hit simulate. And in the background, Creo Simulate will start generating these results in real time. And you'll be able to see just how quick we can generate these results. In the matter of about 10 seconds, um, we have the first simulation study complete. Um, so today, like I said, we're going to be focusing on stress concentrations. So we're going to be focusing on the total von Mises stress, the max von Mises stress, rather. And what we're going to do is we're going to be making some design changes to this product. Now, the great thing about Simulation Live is that we can do these design changes without having to exit this application. It's fully embedded in Creo, which is a, a big plus in terms of um, being quickly able to make design changes and see how they affect our actual application and our goal of reducing the stress. 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up a simulation probe. And we're going to take the max von Mises stress for this entire assembly here. We'll go ahead and save that. And under query, we're going to accumulate this data as we make design changes. And what that will do for us is it will show a comparison of the, that max von Mises stress value as we make these different design changes with our part here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up one of these parts, and we're going to actually change the actual profile of this bar here. So right in this window, I can go over to my sweep, and I'm going to change the actual sketch profile that we're using here. And instead of having this rounded top in this profile, we're going to make this more of a rectangular profile bar here. So it'll be something that looks like this. We can go ahead and click OK. And then we'll go ahead and regenerate that to replicate that on the other side here. And you can see that Creo Simulation Live never stops running. As soon as we make those design changes, it'll automatically um, continue that simulation results computation, giving us super fast, super interactive results um, for our designs. So you can see in here, uh, we now have a max von Mises stress that is significantly lower than what we started with. And up here, we can see that comparison in this sort of this graph view. So we went from a max von Mises stress of about 163 all the way down to about 67. So just by making this simple change, we have a really good idea of where our design should be going. How can we reduce these von Mises um, stress concentrations? You know, maybe with this lower stress, we can actually go ahead and maybe take out some material, making this lighter weight, um, making it more en energy efficient for the product end use here. So I'm going to make one more change. Uh, so I'm going to take this sweep again. I'm going to change the profile again. And before I do that, I'm going to unhide this. And this time we're going to have more of an elliptical style um, profile for our swing arm. So let's go ahead and project this sketch. And we'll replace some of these sketch components with our new sketch. All right, so now we have something that looks like this. Again, we can click OK. And again, we will regenerate this to replicate that on the other side. Creo simulates doing its thing in the background. It's solving this um, while we're making these design changes. And we can see that according to this design change, that max von Mises stress value went up again. So just by making these three different iterations, we know what uh, is the best route to go with our design in terms of lowering those stress concentrations. So overall, CSL can help with many aspects of energy efficiency. It helps to find optimized materials. We could easily change the material of this bar if we wanted to. It helps to find durable designs, helps to reduce energy and waste on physical prototyping, all while performing at a very rapid and energy-friendly manner um, to deliver us quick and accurate results. All right, so next one, uh, Creo ANSYS simulation. So Creo ANSYS is another tool that can help with energy efficiency in products and product development. So one of the drawbacks to CSL, what we just saw, is the accuracy. Although it does give us a really good idea of you know, where our design is going, where we should be going in terms of our goals, um, <clears throat> there are some limitations to the constraints. There's some limitations to the mesh refinements. 
um, that deliver us the most accurate result. And this is really where Creo Ansys shines, uh, powered by some of the best technology in industry today. Creo Ansys can bring us accurate simulation results that will lead to more energy efficient end use applications. So in this next demo, we're gonna be showing Creo Ansys. And in this case, we're gonna be doing a thermal analysis. So a little more directly related to energy efficiency with this one. All right, so for this example, we're gonna be opening up a, a PC board and we're gonna be running a thermal analysis with this. So we'll go up to our applications and we'll go ahead and open up ANSYS simulation. Now in here, again, we have the ability of setting up multiple studies. Um, in this case, we have a thermal study here, which the boundary conditions and loads are gonna look a little bit different than if we did, let's say a structural study. So in our boundary conditions, we can have um, different things like prescribed temperatures. In this case, we can see an, a convection boundary condition. We can also have radiation as well. And then of course, we also have a prescribed temperature of 25C, and we can see what surfaces that is prescribed to. Under our loads, we have a couple different options of, of thermal loads that we can place against this PC board. Um, in this case, we have several different heat flows that we have assigned to specific surfaces on here. Uh, we can also have heat flux and heat generation as well. We'll walk through kind of what's set up for these heat flows, what specific surfaces they're related to, and you can see the different values of wattage that they are assigned to. So for this third one, you can see these different parts down here in the bottom left are assigned with a different heat flow value. And the final load, our heat flow, in that section underneath sort of that gray part here, we're gonna have a heat flow of six watts. Now this is where we have differences between um, Creo Simulation Live and Creo Ansys. So one of the things that we can do with Creo Ansys is we can automatically detect contacts. So within this assembly, obviously we have parts that are intersecting Creo Ansys is going to ask us, how do we want to um, define those contacts? How do we want to define those intersections? So what we can do is automatically generate those contacts and you can see all of them located here. And if we look at one of the definitions for one of these contacts, you can see the specific surfaces that it's referencing. We can also change the actual contact behavior of that from bonded to free to intersecting, a couple of different options there as well. Now, another difference between CSL and Creo Ansys is the ability to control our mesh. So we can do this in a couple different ways. Uh, we can control the global mesh size. So you can see I can put in parameters for minimum size, maximum face, uh, maximum size, growth rate. And I can do this in proximity to a function source. In this case, um, in, in this case, the curvature of our actual parts here. Along with that, I can also do local mesh refinements. So if I choose a surface, I can choose the actual local mesh size for that surface as well, giving us really good control into um, our mesh as well as giving us the most accurate result possible. So we'll go ahead and generate that mesh there. And you can see our little wheel spinning here in the bottom right, indicating that it's currently solving for that mesh. And once that, complete, once that completes, we can go ahead and show what that mesh looks like. So we have a really good idea of the different tessellations of our mesh. 
uh, the different areas that they are uh, more controlled in for our mesh refinements, giving us a very accurate result when we actually go ahead and run this. So now that we've done our boundary conditions, we've done our loads, we've done our contacts, as well as our mesh controls, we can go ahead and run this um, to produce us with some results here. So we can see that this analysis has been done in terms of the mesh, the actual solving and the results for us. So in our results today, we're gonna to be focusing on temperature. So reducing the temperature, um, improving our heat dissipation for this PC board. And you'll notice that um, as we look at the results, we can see sort of this gradient view of where that high temperature area is. There's a couple things that we can do with this. And you can kind of see the differences between where those that temperature is high, where it is low on our entire assembly here. So in this, we can also do a simulation query. So if I go ahead and just click on different surfaces on this PC board, it will actually show us what the temperature of those different points on those surfaces are. So kind of similar to simulation probes, but kind of a live query option for us there. Now what we're gonna do is make a design change. So I'm gonna take this part here inside of this assembly and we're going to go ahead and um, take these ridges and extend them upward. So I'll just go ahead and select on all of these. And using flexible modeling, we can quickly change the actual height of these. So we'll go ahead and just extend those up a little bit to see if that will help with reducing that maximum temperature. So then we'll go back into Creo ANSYS. And that yellow flag indicates that we have um, change geometry, we have to run this again. We get a little message about that. And we'll go ahead and run that simulation again for us. So taking a look at our temperature results again, we can see that we've reduced that temperature by a little bit. I think it before it was at 127, now it's at 121. So just by making that simple design change, we were able to improve the heat dissipation, uh, lower the overall temperature for this uh, thermal PC board. Okay. <clears throat> So in that demo, we were able to perform an accurate thermal analysis, allowing us to improve heat dissipation, thereby reducing the need for additional cooling systems and lowering the energy consumption during product operation. Now, before we move on to sort of the second portion of energy efficiency, I did want to point out that we have, along with CSL and Creo ANSYS, uh, we have other simulation options that are also available in Creo. Uh, Creo Simulate is another great option for accurate results. Uh, there's a bunch of great tools in Creo Simulate to get accuracy tools like mesh refinements, um, contact interfaces. Nonlinear materials is also an option in Creo Simulate that I don't believe is, is an option in Creo ANSYS. Uh, Creo Flow Analysis is another very useful tool for those of, of you who want to save energy in terms of fluid dynamic applications. And then Creo Mechanism Design allows for users to bring their products into a space to analyze the dynamic motion of their products, kind of giving them the ability to create real life scenarios with embedded simulation and data measures.
And one important thing to note about all of these simulation options that we have in Creo is that all of them are embedded into the Creo environment. So we don't have to take our Creo model, export it as a step file, bring it into some third party application and maybe have to defeature it, get rid of small intersections, things like that. We can do this all inside of Creo, um, making it very fast and efficient for our designers as well. All right, so the next product we will talk about is ThingWorks. So ThingWorks is an advanced IoT platform designed to help companies digitally track and manage their assets and operations. So where the previous product, products we were focused on more of the product end use environmental impact, ThingWorks can help save energy in the production phase. So as things are running in our plant, we can monitor things like digital assets. So ThingWorks provides real-time monitoring and efficiency of machine statuses, allowing companies to identify and address underperforming, underperforming or malfunctioning machines promptly. It can also be used for predictive maintenance, helping to predict maintenance needs before failures actually occur. So by ensuring uh, machines are running efficiently and maintenance is predictive rather than reactive, companies can significantly reduce their energy footprint and contribute to sustainability efforts. And actually I was a part of a presentation about sustainability um, a few weeks ago and they were talking about some of the regulations that are coming down from the, the EU that are going to be here in North America um, in the next few years. And a lot of it has to do with the actual power usage per product output. So if you can imagine being able to digitally track the efficiency or digitally track the uh, performance of our, of our assets that are running our machines that are running on the production floor uh, will really help with that power to product ratio. So if you can imagine if a machine goes down on, on the manufacturing floor, right, the total amount of power from the factory is not going to change very much, right? But the product, the power to the product ratio is going to change, right? If that, if that machine is pumping out a thousand parts per hour and that machine is now down, the power to product ratio is going to be significantly impacted. And that's something that we're going to be seeing um, in the US in North America shortly because of those EU uh, regulations. So for this next demonstration, we are going to be looking at an example of ThingWorks IoT. All right, so here in ThingWorks, we have a few different apps that we can choose from. In this case, we're looking at a service application. So our service guys would be coming in here and they could look at the operational status of all of the machines, whether that's on a plant, manufacturing floor or whatnot. In this case, we're looking at a wastewater treatment plant. So you can see here that we can look at the operation status. We can look at some of the connected info in terms of our liquid diaphragm here, things like pressure, flow, speed, power. We can also see that in sort of a graphical view uh, as, a, as those um, relate to time. So you can kind of see that there's a spike in pressure, a spike in flow, as well as a decrease in speed and a decrease in power for this specific liquid diaphragm. So what we can do as a service person, we can come in here and open up a service ticket. And let's just say we wanted to replace this diaphragm. So that information can then be sent to Windchill, it can be sent to PLM, it can be sent to ERP to sort of get that process moving for quickly addressing this problem um, and replacing that actual diaphragm here. Now we'll look at a couple, couple other apps in here. The next one is the plant status. And in here, you can kind of see this plant view of our wastewater treatment plant and of course, this is all very interactive and color coded for us. So on the right, we can scroll down and see our digital assets. In the actual view, we can click on and hover over and see the different statuses of our assets. So you can see most of them are green. We do have one or two that have alerts going on currently. 
but most of these are running uh, properly here. Now we can even go as far as incorporating weather information. So we can basically put in whatever we need that affects our operational efficiency in here. For example, if the, if the weather is supposed to rain for a wastewater treatment plant, obviously that might affect how our wastewater um, operational efficiency is actually working for us. Now inside of this liquid diaphragm warning, we can see the alert type. If we actually click on that, it'll give us more details into what exactly is going on here, some of the history around that as well. And if we click into the actual diaphragm, we can see attributes associated with this machine. We can see the performance and we can see the lack in performance of the end of this week that we're looking at. We can also look at an alert for our sedimentation tank in this example. But let's go over to another app here where we can kind of see this in a different view. And this is sort of the process view application that we're opening up here. So instead of actually seeing the whole plant, we can now see sort of the flow of water as it's working through our different machines and being treated. And again, this is going to be very interactive. Uh, we can click on these different items. It's going to be color coded for us. Um, letting us know which assets are performing correctly, which ones have warnings, um, so on and so forth. So as we click on the sedimentation tank, we can see that warning. We can see some of the graphs in terms of wastewater influent, in terms of pressure, and maybe how those warnings have occurred based on those measurements. We can also look at our diaphragm, again, pulling up attributes about this, pulling up that warning that we looked at, and showing some of these graphs. Um, and based on different roles, we can open up different views and we can actually see the operational efficiency based on what your role is inside of the actual company here. So what ThingWorks will do is it will present all of our data in terms of manufacturing and operations um, and help us to achieve that full operational efficiency, helping us to be more reactive or more preventative instead of reactive in terms of um, our machines and in terms of our production and power usage. All right, so that was all I wanted to go over today. I'm not sure if there was any questions, but now would be the time to enter them into the chat. All right, I will take a look here and see if we've had any come through. I'm not currently seeing any questions here. Um, I was thinking, so um, based on the simulation presentation that I attended at PTC, I'm guessing the latter of our two energy efficiency topics or what we were focusing on um, was about lowering a company's energy usage per output and how much energy and garbage usage is eventually linked to a product's passport and and so just higher level going over okay so we're starting with um the energy that a product puts out and then what uh actual manufacturing plant as far as their carbon footprint goes um, and how we can make that more energy efficient would that be a good good summary of what you were trying to get at there steven yeah absolutely and also along with that um using dashboards like like we just saw through thingworks we can actually track and get a really good idea of what our total power usage is in terms of um, all the machines that are running in our plant as well. So it's not only you know the the power to product ratio, but it's also are we achieving our our power goals uh, as a whole as well. So there's a lot of of different um, goals, sustainability goals that we can hit with with dashboards uh, through PTC ThingWorks. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for expanding on that a little bit. Yeah. Well, um, I'm not seeing any questions right now, uh, but obviously if anyone has any questions, reach out to Steven. 
Um, we just want to say a huge thank you. We appreciate everyone being here and learning how you can use tools like Creo Simulate, um, live Creo Ansys simulation and ThingWorks to improve your company's sustainable impact on the world. And that is going to wrap up our sustainability for design webinar trilogy. If you missed one of our previous webinars in the series, you can go ahead and hop onto our website or onto our LinkedIn. Um, and we will be sending out the replays for all of the webinars uh, that we put on in this series. So thank you again for joining us today. And we hope you have a better insight on how your company can sustainably impact the world today. Thank you all.